this is part of the course that we give on Alastana uh, material models. So in this course, we talk about uh, several material models for each one of its applications. Uh, we categorize all the material models, and then we talk about the formulation. We talk about applications, and also we show you a sample input file and the test required in order to come up with the parameters to be input directly into the material models. So this chapter four, in which uh, basically I categorized all material models in Alas Dyna with respect to their um, usage. So again, this is only a portion of chapter four. There are um, 11 chapters in this course. Because what I did in this, I simply looked at the LS Dyna material libraries. Okay? So I looked at them and then I categorized them by their usage for what type of problems. So there is tremendous libraries with great selection of material in LS Dyna, as you know. When the material is, is elastic, when the behavior is elastic, not the material, but when the behavior from material is elastic, then you can use elastic material. You don't need to go to any complicated one. However, when the behavior is nonlinear, inelastic, then you have to choose the material model that goes with your uh, actual material. Uh, I put three material models in LS Dyna. Um, references are there. Okay, so if you want to use them, you have to go like and like some of the material models in Alas Dana, you have to go to the actual paper and find out what each term means. In here, I'll try to do some of them. Obviously, there are 273, 78. The number goes from one from one to 278. In here, we're probably going to talk about all all material models together, maybe about 50. Okay, that I'm going to talk about uh, within this. Uh, class um, and hopefully it will be clear at least for these material that I'm going to talk about but in general if you have some material that is there you have to go back and find out the reference for this and come up with uh, these parameters based on understanding of that paper so I'm categorized these material so for metals you have this page this page, this page, this page, you have almost five pages of material models that you're going to be using for metal, okay? And certainly, uh, some of them are uh, simplification of others or additions of other of, uh, of others. So let's say material 24, material 123, material 114, material 124, is really material 24 with additions. Then you have Johnson Cook 15, and then simplified Johnson Cook, modified Johnson Cook. Uh, so these are additions or subtractions of, of a certain material model. And some of them are just a new material. Okay? Uh, some of these are particularly for metal forming people. Okay, so you have 30, uh, you have 36, 37, 39, okay? Uh, let's see, what more? 104, 105, 122, 120. Okay, these are, let's see if there's more. 133, 153, 190. These are for metal forming people. 230, 243, metal forming people. 244, metal forming people. Okay, so... Uh, Lots of these material models will be applicable to certain industry for metals. Johnson Cook, a good material model for defense problems, okay, where you have high velocity impact, high action area, and stuff like that. For plastics, you have these material models, about, I think, one page. Yeah, one page. Okay, so for example, one GE plastic. This is particularly by GE, okay? People use material 24 for, pla for polymers or plastics. 89 is a good one, one step above. But the best one 
is actually 187, but there's lots of testing that requires material 187. So I'm going to talk about the testing for 187 to get some of these uh, parameters. 141 is mine, but 141 is difficult a little bit based on the work of Stouffer. I just implemented that. Uh, that's for uh, polymer. Then for glass, you have laminated glass or material 60 for glass, low velocity impact, and you have the high velocity impact, which is 241 Johnson Hallquist material model. This is from uh, from the code uh, by Johnson um, uh, and for, by Johnson uh, Gordon. Um, this is in the, in the Epic code. They put it into Alastina. Then you have for hydrodynamic simulation. These are specific material models for hydro hydrodynamic type problem in which we have significant amount of pressure, if you like, into the problem. For soil, concrete, and rock, you have one page and two pages actually and a half. Okay, so we'll talk about some of them, uh, discussion of some of them in this class. And then for foam, you have uh, one page and a half. Okay, for foam, uh, there is one lecture on foam. So we characterize all these material models and I tell you uh, which one is, is good for what type of foam. But certainly not all of them. Uh, then for rubber, uh, you have a very simple rubber material model type 7, which only you need G, you need G the shear modulus, up to uh, more complicated uh, ones like, for example, 77O, Ogden is a very good one. You need uh, uh, biaxial testing to, uh, to implement. And of course, there are other thermal effects and so forth, which, uh, which we talked about. Uh, 181, 83 is simplified one. Uh, uh, even though it's simplified, uh, we need to understand what it is. When I say simplified, you only need one, uh, one unit axial test. Okay, compression tension. That's it. And then Alas Dyna. And of course, if you even damage, then you have to do multiple tests as well. I'm going to talk about that. For fabric, this is loose fabric. Uh, meaning that uh, there is only fiber, no resin. So 34 is fabric for airbag. 134 viscoelastic. The fabric, the fabric is viscoelastic. So the fibers are viscoelastic. And then 234, 235. These are my material models. I put in Alastina. Actually developed the whole thing and implemented them. These are normally for body armor, uh, anything loose fabric, very loose under. Uh, high velocity. Okay, that's a viscoelastic loose fabric. And then this is the micromechanical, the dry fabric. So this is based on micromechanic. And both of them are actually based on woven type of fabric. Then you have material models for orthotropic material without failure. So either orthotropic elastic or orthotropic with some temperature effect and the way temperature acting is either a constant or a load curve. It can be linear or nonlinear. Uh, and then there are some orthotropic material models, which is like the 116, 117, 118, which basically are based on a resultant formulation. Resultant meaning that you don't calculate stresses, you calculate moment and stress resultant. So it needs the ABD matrix for the comp typical composite, and some of them is uh, anisotropic and, and the temperature effect uh, as well. Then you have the material model for composite with damage. So material model for composite with damage, and depending on the material model, you have different damage functions, okay? So different failure criteria. Uh, different uh, post failure criteria. So for example, 22 is the simplest damage composite material model. Not recommended, but that's the simplest one based on Chang and Chang failure criteria. So the failure criteria is reached. In one shot you unload, the element is deleted. And then you have 54, 55. Okay, Chang failure criteria, but with some kind of a damage post failure behavior. 58 is a good one. Out of all of them, 58 is, uh, is, is basically 
uh, have a nice post failure which through a damage function and you can control this damage function you control how it um, uh, it basically gets softened then material 59 which is plasticity based uh, and then you have wood material model then they took 158 and they added strain rate sensitivity to it and then 161, 162 is composite by MSC that's Material Science Corporation it's a separate license and then you have 219 by University of British Columbia and then the 221 which is for solid elements, simplified damage, it's uh, actually Chrysler implementation. Okay, so uh, these are the material models for composite. Then you have for biomedical applications, uh, there is soft tissue, uh, viscous soft tissue, there's heart tissue, lung tissue, muscle, brain tissue, uh, and so forth. So lots of material models for, uh, uh, for bio application. And then for fluid problems, so if you're doing fluid structure interaction problem, probably you're going to use MATNOL, which is uh, material type 9, either for air or for uh, uh, water, uh, you can use that. And then there are others, uh, material models for uh, ALE type of problems. Uh, civil components, these are specifically for uh, uh, civil structural application. So there is uh, 166 moment curvature beam, there is steel concentric braces, there is seismic beam, there is reinforced concrete shear walls, there is concrete beams. So when you say seismic beam, concrete beam, these are actually, and this one, the first one, these are actually a beam element, okay, in which you can do one dimensional, let's say, reinforced concrete shear, uh, I'm sorry, seismic beam and so forth. Um, so these are the material models for civil component. Now, if you're modeling delamination in composite or you're modeling debonding uh, of your adhesive, uh, you have a couple of ways to do that problem. Uh, you have the uh, you have the cohesive uh, the cohesive zone, okay, or cohesive layer, and the other alternative is uh, basically the tight contact with failure. Okay, but since we're uh, doing uh, 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 we're uh, uh, doing material, so uh, you're going to use these material models for modeling delamination. So you model delamination sometimes with strain rate sensitivity if you like to. That would be 240. So that has a strain rate sensitivity in it. So what are these material models? These are actually uh, material that gives you the forced traction separation laws. Then there are general use materials, so elastic, rigid material, you can use it for anything that does not uh, deform uh, significantly. Okay, or elastic for any material that uh, the behavior is linear. Uh, discrete beam, there's lots of material models for discrete beam, so what is a discrete beam? Discrete beam, you want to substitute a spring by a discrete beam because a spring has uh, only one uh, degree of freedom in the local system. Then we translate this into three components, uh, while a discrete beam has six degrees of freedom. Okay, and there are different material models for this uh, this beam. You, the beam can be zero length or finite length. Why so many? That's because many components, let's say engine mounts or body mounts in a vehicle, they want to model this with uh, some kind of a, a discrete beam. Okay, and because of that, you have so many, uh, so many of these uh, material models. That's just an example I gave you, but there's lots of application of this, uh, of this discrete beam material models. You can see it's almost one page and a half. Uh, and then there are other materials, let's say honeycomb, there is two of them, one it's 26 and 126, there is a ceramic material model, there is a spot weld material model, there is ice material model, there is carbon-carbon material model. For instance, 155-236 was created after the 
uh, the shuttle accident. Okay, so they wanted to simulate that. So uh, different groups they created different material models for uh, for these uh, for this type of uh, simulation. All right. So common material usage for uh, isotropic plasticity. Uh, these are the common material models that we we use. So you have material 10 hydro. You can use this even modeling foam with equation of state. Material 3 is a simpler plasticity material model. Material 15 is Johnson Cook for defense application. Um, uh, 24 is our friend. Uh, we use it all the time. Uh, 81, 82 is plasticity with damage. I'm going to talk about it. This is uh, this you can use to model polymers as well. So you can have uh, a damage function. 123 modification of 24. Okay, 123 modification of 24. Different failure criteria can be added. 124 is modification of 24 that allows different tension and compression stress strain curve. So you do tension and compression, you do testing in tension, and you put the two curves. 165 nonlinear kinematics. So everything is linear kinematic hardening. This is nonlinear kinematic hardening. And then 224 is actually viscoplastic material model is tabulated Johnson Cook that can be used uh, to simulate uh, uh, if you want to simulate uh, problem defense and you have all the test data that goes be my guess 224 is the most accurate okay but I'm going to talk about the requirement for that testing and you will see it requires extensive amount of tests in order to use material uh, 24. Not only test, some simulations as well, okay, that you have to do before you even use this material model for your real problem. Uh, for anisotropic plasticity, uh, so this is like metal forming people if you like, okay, stamping metal, uh, sheet metal forming and stuff like that. So material 36 or 37, 37 is the most utilized, the simplest. 103 used for shells or solid. Um, uh, so 103P is for is simplified 103 for shell only. 157 combines 103P and and two uh, and is for shell. And then you have um, 42, 39 with forming limit diagram. Okay. So if you're in the metal forming business, you know what forming limit diagram is. And then you have sometimes 59 can be used also to model autotropic type of behavior for uh, anisotropic plasticity. Viscoelasticity, the simplest one we're going to do next. After launch, we'll do, uh, we'll do viscoelasticity and what kind of test you need to do and how do you deal with these material models. So the simplest one is material 6. Then you have material 76, which is called general visco elastic you will uh, you will see that general viscoelastic actually you can have layered viscoelasticity within this which in, in which one layer is elastic one layer is pla is viscoelastic with a flag so you can use it for example to model glass if you like one layer glass elastic and then the vinyl is viscoelastic let's say PVC viscoelastic uh, so that a general viscoelastic 76 then for tissue, 91, quasi-linear, 176, also for tissue, like a brain, skin, kidney, spine. And then there's the, uh, the hill foam, which is highly compressible, rubber-like, uh, and uh, there is autotropic, autotropic behavior in it, 178. For polymers, so plastics, polymers, um, 81 is plasticity would damage what people use in order to control because with plasticity damage you control the post yield behavior much better with 81. Uh, 89 is called plastic plasticity polymer you do not have to worry about yield stress. Ellis Dana determined what the yield stress is based on the curve that you put from the test. While in 81 you have to give what the yield stress is. 89, you do not have to give what the yield stress is. And then there are other material models. 
for hot plastics, okay, you use 60 or 106, so that's elastic with viscosity thermal. And new ones are available, which is the most complicated one, 187, which is called Simplify Semi-Analytical Material for Plastics. That's what it's called. It's actually based on a PH dissertation from Germany. And it, the guy did an excellent job in his dissertation, I think. But you'll see there is significant amount of testing that involved in this material 187. For rubber material, okay, these are the material models I'm going to discuss. Uh, material 7, Blatsku, material 27. Uh, that's, that's, Blatsku is one parameter model. Um, Monier-Rivlin two parameter model, okay, and then there is Nash rubber, uh, Fraser Nash actually, and uh, there is the Ogden uh, function, okay, material 77, and then there's the simplified rubber and simplified uh, uh, foam uh, with damage and without damage, in which I'm going to uh, talk about as well. Uh, foam materials, these are the material models I'm going to talk about. Uh, so you have uh, material 53, closed cell foam, 57, low density foam, 62, viscous foam, and then 63, crushable foam, 73, low density viscous, 75, it's uh, pressure dependent if you like, 75, pressure dependent, and then you have 83, which is Fu Chang foam, and Fu Chang well, dissertation, University of Michigan implementing to Alastana as material 83. Uh, composite material models, uh, there they are. These are the common ones, as I mentioned, uh, uh, with a with, uh, failure type of, uh, of model. But uh, let's see. For defense problems, these are the material models that, are, that you can use for defense. Uh, 224 is really there. I didn't put it, but I think you can substitute uh, 15 by 224. But there is, uh, uh, for example, uh, ceramic material model, uh, defense problems, concrete. You see this concrete, you can do very high velocity impact into concrete with material 111. While it will be a nightmare to do that with other uh, material models, especially uh, these are the defense uh, type of uh, material models.